let's deploy your Spring Boot app to the cloud with AWS. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how you can deploy your Spring Boot app to the AWS cloud using Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk is a fully managed service provided for your AWS EC2 instance. This makes it easy to deploy and manage applications in the cloud without complex configuration. This demo will be broken down into three parts. The first part is packaging your app. Second part is creating roles for AWS. And the third part is creating and deploying your app on the Elastic Beanstalk. Let's get started. So part one is going to be packaging our application. We're going to package our application as an executable jar file. To do this, we're going to do a Maven clean. We're going to do a Maven package, and we're going to copy this to a safe location. If you're using Gradle, it should be a pretty similar option. I'll be using IntelliJ for this demo, but you can use any ID you're comfortable with. You can use Spring Tool Suites. You can use Eclipse. You can even use VS Code. So using the built-in options for your ID just makes it a lot quicker. So I'll be using a very basic Spring Boot application, as we can see right here. It's only one class. It's part of the default class that comes with when you initialize a new Spring Boot project. And we'll be returning just a string that says, hello world. Let's start this application to make sure it runs without any issue before we go further. Go to the top right and hit run. As you can see here, we started without any issues. So we're going to go to our browser now, and we're going to ensure we get our hello world string from our root directory. And this will be on our local host port 8080. So I'm here on my browser, and I have my local host 8080 saved as a bookmark. If you're going to be doing a lot of developing, it makes it a lot easier when you have it saved. Let's go ahead and select it. And perfect, we get hello world return. So we know our app is running without any issues. So we're back in our application. And when you look at your project file structure, you can see there's this target folder. Depending on what you've done before, how you've built your application in the past, you may or may not have this target folder, and that's not a big deal. Let's stop our application. And my application is built using Maven. With IntelliJ, we have our Maven options here on the right, and here's what we're going to do. This may or may not be expanded, but we're going to expand it. We're going to go to Lifecycle, and right here, the first thing we're going to do is clean, and this is going to clean that target folder. We want to make sure when we package it, we're packaging our current code, the working code that we just demonstrated. So let's double click this. And great, that target folder is gone. For our current goal is package. As the name implies, it's gonna package this into a jar file. Let's double click that. We can see it running, running tests, running the application, and then we get a build successful. And we see a new target folder. Let's open that target folder up and scroll down. And you can see here, there's a jar file. And it has my name, basic Spring Boot app. And this is just the versioning and the snapshot. Uh, it's my first one, so it is of course point zero. So this is the file we're gonna need, and this is the file we're gonna use to upload to AWS to deploy our project. Save this file somewhere safe, save this file somewhere that you'll have access to later on in this project. Now that we have our application packaged, we can move on to our second part, is setting roles in AWS. Before now, you would be able to create roles automatically when you're creating your Elastic Bean server. AWS recent security policy change no longer allows you to create roles automatically from one service that has a trust policy with another service. And this is because the service we'll be using is an Elastic Beanstalk but this Elastic Beanstalk will be managing an EC2 instance. So we need to create a role for that EC2 instance. And I'll demonstrate how to do this right now. Here's a role name that we'll be using. Here's a role permission that we'll be using. I'll make sure these are 
uh, copied into the comments so you'll be able to access to it. And this is a link just describing how this has changed, uh, how, how AWS has changed this in their security policy. So let's go ahead and get started and create this role. So here we are. We logged into AWS and we're logged into the main page, our home page of our console, our console homepage. So we're gonna search for roles. Here's IAM, I -M, and below it, you see roles here. Now I already have this role created, but I'm gonna delete this role and recreate it so you can follow along. Let's copy and paste this here. That was a quick demo on deleting roles. It's that easy. So next we'll hit create role. And we'll select trusted entity. And this is AWS. Like we said, we're gonna be accessing AWS EC2. Use case. Again, it's gonna be EC2 use case. And we'll just leave the default EC2 selected at the top. Now hit next. Now is the permission policies we'll be adding. And you can see there's 47 different permission policies here. So it can get a bit overwhelming. This is where we'll just copy and paste that policy that I have in the code that I showed on our project outline. Here's our project outline. And like we said, we're looking for a role permission. So we're gonna copy this permission right here. We're gonna paste that permission in here. And as you can see, the permission is already here. AWS Elastic Beanstalk Custom Platform for EC2 role. That's exactly what we'd be doing. Uh, Elastic Beanstalk using EC2. And the description, we could check out what the description is here. Uh, provides the instance in your custom platform building environment permission to launch EC2 instances. That's exactly what we need. So we need to make sure we check this uh, checkbox and hit next. Role name. Now you can name this whatever you want. Uh, I'm using the name that the Elastic Beanstalk recommends, provides. So we'll go back to our application outline and we're gonna copy this role name. All we do is scroll down to the bottom and hit create role. And congratulations, we've completed part two of creating the role that will be needed for accessing our EC2. Next, we're gonna actually create the Elastic Beanstalk service. Now that we've completed part two, we're gonna complete part three. Create and deploy our app on Elastic Beanstalk. Now when you create a new Elastic Beanstalk, there's six steps. We're only gonna need four of those six steps. Step one, which is configuring the environment. Step two, which is configuring the service. And step five is this configure update, updates, monitoring, and logging. And finally, step six is just a simple review to submit for the new service. The new service will take a few minutes to spin up. As we wait for that, we'll review some of the options that the service has. And once it's ready, we'll test out our new service. So let's go back to our console homepage and let's go search for Elastic Bean Stock. Run and manage web apps. Perfect. We click on that and it takes us to the homepage for it. Now here's something that you'll find helpful. Uh, if you're gonna be using the same service often, which I do, you can click this star and it will add it to your uh, shortcuts on the top menu. I have a lot of shortcuts on here, so it sort of starts to lose its perfect purpose as a while, but if you're not using a lot of apps, it's really helpful. So now let's hit create application. And it takes us to this six step process of creating our uh, configuration 
for our Elastic Beanstalk service. So let's get started with this configuration. We'll leave a web service environment right here on the top. Add a name, a basic spring app. <clears throat> As you scroll down, it automatically brings over your basic spring app and adds an EMV here. So we can leave that, and then we can leave this blank as well. Platform will be managed, and right here we're gonna choose Java. And then we're going to choose whichever Java version you'll be running. I'm running 17, so I'll go ahead and pick this 17 right here. And this platform version we'll leave as recommended. Now application code. We're gonna select upload our own code. Now we need a second uh, creative version label. And then if down, right below it, we're gonna hit local file because we're gonna upload our application. So let's go ahead and choose that file. So let's get started with this configuration. We'll leave a web service environment right here on the top. Add a name, a basic spring app. <clears throat> As you scroll down, it automatically brings over your basic spring app and adds an EMV here. So we can leave that, and then we can leave this blank as well. Platform will be managed, and right here we're gonna choose Java. And then we're going to choose whichever Java version you'll be running. I'm running 17, so I'll go ahead and pick this 17 right here. And this platform version we'll leave as recommended. Now application code. We're gonna select upload our own code. Now we need a second uh, creative version label. And then if down, right below it, we're gonna hit local file because we're gonna upload our application. So let's go ahead and choose that file. Here's the file, I saved it to my desktop. I'm gonna hit open. Green check mark, it was uploaded successfully. And then right here, configuration presets. And it's as simple as that, free tier eligible. Now there are more requirements for free tier eligibility. Uh, your account has to be, I believe, newer within 12 months and a couple other requirements. Make sure to review those requirements before relying on this free tier. And then as you look at your dashboard, I will show you a cost analysis and you can see if you're starting to occur any cost. We'll hit next. And configure service access. Now this is where we had to create that role. And if we scroll down a little bit, you can see the EC2 instance profile, it's already preloaded. It already knows which profile this is the only profile that has access to it, and this is the profile that we created. That's already preloaded. This is our first time going in on here, so we're gonna say create and use new service role. This EC2 key pair, we can leave that blank. We'll hit next. Uh, setting up the network, we can all leave this with the default options. Scroll to the bottom, hit next. Configuring instance traffic and scaling. Uh, again, leave this all as default and scroll to the bottom. Hit next. Now step five, this is the next step where we'll be creating, uh, we'll be adjusting the settings. We scroll down and we will, we will find environment properties. Now what we need to do is change the environment properties port. And this is because the Elastic Beanstalk default port is 5,000, right? Uh, Elastic Beanstalk will use an Nginx server that will look for port 80, web browser traffic. And then it will forward the request to your application on port 5,000. But as we saw before, our, our application doesn't run on port 5000, our application runs on port 8080. So if you weren't to change the setting, then you would get an error in the Nginx server. So let's go back, 
set up this configuration, add environmental environment property, port all capitals, and then all we need is 8080. And we are all set. We'll hit next. On the review page, we'll scroll all the way to the bottom and hit submit. Now this might take a few minutes to, um, to take you on to the next page. And what it's doing is making sure all our configurations are correct, making sure the roles that we've um, selected are able to perform what they need to perform. I'll take you to this, your dashboard, your home page for this basic spring app environment. And this is gonna take a few minutes to load up, but you can see here right now it says the health is unknown and it'll more than likely stay unknown because we didn't create any health checks for that, which is fine for now. Once it successfully launches the environment, it'll give us our domain name. and We'll be able to check out that domain and ensure it's working properly. Right here, you see upload and deploy. Currently grayed out because the application isn't loaded. But once it's fully loaded and running, we'll be able to upload new application versions and deploy them. So let's check back in once this is complete. And great, we can now see our environment has successfully launched. The health check is still pending, but we have no health checks. So it's probably gonna still stay pending and eventually change to unknown. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this link and it's gonna take us to our service. And here, as you can see, we have our hello world coming from our basic spring app environment, Elastic Beanstalk. Congratulations, we've deployed your Spring Boot app on the cloud in AWS using Elastic Beanstalk service. You may be excited, but you may be looking at this and also saying, it says not secured. And this URL address is not the most appealing. If you plan on sharing this with uh, employers or even friends, you may want something that's nicer. And follow along videos, I'll show you how to add a custom domain for your app. I'll also show you how to add HTTPS certificates to secure your cloud app. If this video was helpful, if this provided value for you, please give me a like and subscribe. If you run into any issues during this or during your deployment, leave me a comment and I'll see how I can help you out. Also, if you have any other videos that you'd like to see, if you're stuck on anything else, if there's any different types of deployments or Java coding or Spring Boot that you need help with, leave me um, a comment and I can point you in the right direction or even create a video that will help you out. Thank you for watching and follow, like, and subscribe to watch future videos.